Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So Ben and Josh were playing Call of Duty when their parents came charging into the living room. Dad shouts, you boys play that darn thing way too much. Get your asses outside and play. I don't want to see you two until tea time. He kicks the boys outside, then turns to his wife. Alone alas, he says, unbuttoning his trousers. His wife gives a wicked smile and removes her top. A few minutes later, walking down the street, Ben turns to Josh. I can't believe we got kicked out of our own live stream. I know, says Josh, looking at his phone. But you should see the views we're getting. <laughs> so an army colonel is newly assigned command of a unit. On his first day, he walks by a park bench with an armed private standing guard next to it. The colonel asks, son, why are you standing guard by this bench? I wouldn't know, sir, answers the private. The sergeant assigned a guard duty for it, and today is my shift. So the colonel goes and finds the sergeant and asks him, Sergeant, why do you have a private guarding the park bench? Captain's orders, sir, answers the sergeant. I have been ordered to assign a guard detail around that bench, so each day a different private stands guard. Intrigued, the colonel visits the company headquarters and asks for the captain. Captain, why did you assign a guard duty to the park bench? Sir, answers the captain. This has been a standing order by your retired predecessor. Ever since he took command of this unit six years ago, all I know is that on his very first day, he walked past that bench, briefly rested on it, and then, as soon as he reached the headquarters, his first order was to ensure that bench remains unused. We had armed guards posted to it ever since. Shall the guard be removed, sir? No, answers the colonel. Keep the guard until we find the reason for it. It could be important. After two months on the job, the colonel took some leave and traveled to the retirement home where his predecessor, now an old, crusty, retired general, spends his days. General, asks the colonel, do you remember why there is an armed guard assigned to the park bench where you sat six years ago on the first day of your assignment to the unit I'm now in command of? The general stands dumbfounded for a moment, then asks, You mean the paint still hasn't dried? <laughs> so Bob was in trouble. He forgot his wedding anniversary. His wife was really pissed. She told him, Tomorrow morning, I expect to find a gift in the driveway that goes from zero to two hundred in six seconds, and it better be there. The next morning, he got up early and left for work. When his wife woke up, she looked out the window, and sure enough, there was a box gift wrapped in the middle of the driveway. Confused, the wife put on her robe and ran out to the driveway, brought the box back in the house. She opened it and found a brand new bathroom scale. Bob has been missing since Friday. <laughs> so a blind man goes to the doctor, who explains to him that there is a new procedure that will restore his sight. But, says the doctor, you may have a hard time maintaining a boner after. So the blind man asks if that is a common side effect, and the doctor says, No. You will be able to see your wife. <laughs> so, a conservative and a liberal were lost in a jungle. After what seemed like forever, they came upon some old ruins with a beautiful freshwater spring running through, so they decided to indulge drinking from and bathing in it. Before they could finish, they are ambushed by a tribe of indigenous people who capture and cage them. They are hauled off to the village chief, who says to them, You two have stepped on sacred land and tainted forbidden waters, and for this you must be punished. Now, choose your fate, death, or one hour of lancing. 
What's a Lansing? asked one of the men just as a huge, muscular individual stepped out from inside of a hut. This is Lance, says the chief, our village stud. For one hour, you will be bent over, and Lance gets his way with you. After a brief moment, the liberal decides that an hour of sodomizing is still better than death, so he takes the hour of Lansing. After which, he is set free from his cage. The conservative, however, has a strong conviction against gay activities and exclaims to the chief, I would rather die than commit such atrocities. I choose death. Very well, says the chief. Death by Lansing. <laughs> so Dave got called to the director's office. With a serious look on his face, the director began, Dave, we have to make some cutbacks. Either Jack or Sarah has to be laid off. This is really hard, Dave says. Sarah is my best worker, but Jack has three kids to support. The director gives him a day to think about it. Later that day, he calls Sarah to his office and says, Sarah, I've got a real problem. I've got the either lay you or jack off. Sarah thinks for a moment and says, you should probably jack off. I'm on my period. <laughs> so a man went to the police station, wishing to speak with the burglar who had broken into his house the night before. You'll get your chance in court, said the desk sergeant. No, 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 said the man. I want to know how he got into the house without waking my wife. I've been trying to do that for years. <laughs> so a married couple was in a terrible accident where the woman's face was severely burned. The doctor told the husband that they couldn't graft any skin from her body because she was too skinny. So the husband offered to donate some of his own skin. However, the only skin on his body that the doctor felt was suitable would have to come from his buttocks. The husband and wife agreed that they would tell no one about where the skin came from and requested that the doctor also honor their secret. After all, this was a very delicate matter. After the surgery was completed, Everyone was astounded at the woman's new beauty. She looked more beautiful than she ever had before. All her friends and relatives just went on and on about her youthful beauty. One day, she was alone with her husband, and she was overcome with emotion at his sacrifice. She said, Dear, I just want to thank you for everything you did for me. How can I possibly repay you? My darling, he replied. I get all the thanks I need every time I see your mother kiss you on the cheek. <laughs> so a small zoo in Georgia acquired a very rare species of gorilla. Within a few weeks, the gorilla, a female, became very difficult to handle. Upon examination, the veterinarian determined the problem. The gorilla was in season. To make matters worse, there was no male gorilla available. Thinking about their problem, the zookeeper thought of Bobby Lee Walton, a redneck part-time worker responsible for cleaning the animal cages. Bobby Lee, like most rednecks, had little sense but possessed ample ability to satisfy a female of any species. The zookeeper thought they might have a solution. Bobby Lee was approached with a proposition. Would he be willing to mate with the gorilla for $500? Bobby Lee showed some interest, but said he would have to think the matter over carefully. The following day, he announced that he would accept the offer, but only under four conditions. First, Bobby Lee said, I ain't gonna kiss her on the lips. The keeper quickly agreed to this condition. Second, he said, you can't never tell no one about this. The keeper again readily agreed to this condition. Third, Bobby Lee said, I want all the children raised as Baptist. Once again, it was agreed. And last of all, Bobby Lee stated, You got to give me another week to come up with the $500. <laughs> 
So the Lord spoke to Noah and said, In one year I am going to make it rain and cover the whole earth with water until all flesh is destroyed. But I want you to save the righteous people and two of every kind of living things on the earth. Therefore, I am commanding you to build an ark. In a flash of lightning, God delivered the specifications for an ark. In fear and trembling, Noah took the plans and agreed to build the ark. Remember, said the Lord, you must complete the ark and bring everything aboard in one year. Exactly one year later, fierce storm clouds covered the earth and all the seas of the earth went into a tumult. The Lord saw Noah was sitting in his front yard weeping. Noah, he shouted, where is the ark? Lord, please forgive me, cried Noah. I did my best, but there were big problems. First, I had to get a permit for construction and your plans did not comply with the codes. I had to hire an engineering firm and redraw the plans. Then I got into a fight with Occupational Health and Safety Commission over whether or not the Ark needed a fire sprinkler system and flotation devices. Then my neighbor objected, claiming I was violating zoning ordinances by building the Ark in my front yard so I had to lodge a rezoning application with Brisbane City Council, and it is now with the Land and Environment Court. I had problems getting enough wood for the Ark, because there was a ban on cutting trees to protect the kookaburra. I finally convinced the Dept of Conservation and Land Management that I needed the wood to save the kookaburras. However, National Parks and Wildlife won't let me catch any kookaburras, so no kookaburras. The carpenters formed a union and went out on strike. I had to negotiate a settlement with the Dept of Industrial Relations before anyone would pick up a saw or a hammer. Now I have 16 carpenters on the Ark, but still no kookaburras. When I started rounding up the other animals, I got sued by RSPCA. They objected to me only taking two of each kind aboard. Just when I got the suit dismissed, the EP notified me that I could not complete the Ark without filing an environmental impact statement on your proposed flood. They didn't take very kindly to the idea that they had no jurisdiction over the conduct of the creator of the universe. Then the Department of Land and Water Conservation demanded a map of the proposed new flood plan. I sent them a complete set of directories. Right now, I am trying to resolve a complaint filed with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission that I am practicing discrimination. By not taking godless, unbelieving people aboard, the IRS has seized my assets claiming that I'm building the Ark in preparation to flee the country to avoid paying taxes. I also have to wait for registration of my ABN for the GST. I just got a notice from the Waterways Authority that I owe them some kind of user tax and failed to register the Ark as a recreational watercraft. I also need a boat driver's license, but they are debating about how to classify the craft. I'm getting continual visits from Greenpeace, Work Cover, Sheriff's Office, and numerous other government departments. Finally, then Council for Civil Liberties got the courts to issue an injunction against further construction of the Ark, saying that since God is flooding the earth, it is a religious event and therefore unconstitutional. I really don't think I can finish the Ark for another five or six years. Noah wailed. The sky began to clear, the sun began to shine, and the seas began to calm. A rainbow arched across the sky. Noah looked up, hopefully. You mean you are not going to destroy the earth, Lord? No, said the Lord sadly. I don't have to. The government bureaucracy already has. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> <laughs>